look, Kathy, this is a deer trail. He can go through all this chaparral, but we can't. We don't have any chaps like Mr. Brewster does, do we? Only Mr. Deer can go through those trails, and he can hear all the birds that live up here. They sing their songs so beautifully. Oh, Nikki, I just heard Mr. Scrubjay, and he is the guardian of the chaparral, and he tells everybody that lives here that people are coming, and he calls out, Jay, 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 Jay. And Mr. Rented is here, too. Hold your hand like this and paint him all brown and give him a long tail, and he calls out. <laughs> Let's try it. Look what Raul found. A lizard. Did you ever? Blue belly lizard. Oh, he does have a beautiful blue belly. Put Mr. Lizard very gently in the fold of your hand. Take your first finger like this and stroke his throat and stroke his belly. And he says, oh, I just love that. And he'll go fast asleep. Look down that little hole under the chaparral bushes. Look. Who do you suppose lives down there? Mr. Mal. Who else lives down there? Who's going to go down that little path down that hill? Mr. Fox. Mr. Fox lives down there. now in all this grassland there are a lot of flowers but wait a minute there's something I want to tell you because there are a lot of snakes here up in the chaparral it was so dense we couldn't get to the snakes but here we will see them hey there goes a the snake and there's something I want you to know in California where we live if you go for a walk and you find a snake whose head is like your finger and whose tail is like a pencil point you can pick him up but wait a minute all snakes have teeth and all snakes can bite so let's pick him up by the back of the head do you know what kind he is? A gopher snake. God, he's wrapping around my hand. Oh, he's hissing. Sounds like he's snoring. <laughs> Feels so smooth. I know. Rabbits here and lots of badgers and lots of gophers and moles and oh look I see a pile of dirt over there go see if that's Mr. Gopher's house yeah. anybody home usually they sleep all day and they come out at night oh here's a mouse front door open look who's going to have the mouse for lunch uh, Mr. Snake. and who's going to have the snake for lunch Mr. Hawk. I tell you what boys put your arms above your shoulders like this there's only, make a good V like this, because there's only one bird that can do that, and that will be a turkey vulture. So we say V for vulture. Now then, Mr. Hawk says, I can't do that. Put your arms out straight. So we say straight out for a hawk, straight out for a hawk. Now both the turkey vulture and the hawk fly right over here, and they've got to have lots of wind to fly, otherwise they can't fly. They wait for a good windy day. Pick him up by the back of the head. Watch that lizard, Andy. They bite. Does he have a big head? Yes. Is he long? Yes. Then he's an alligator lizard. Oh, boys, there are many things to eat in the grasslands. Right here, we have the bracken that comes up each year, and it's curled just like your hand. So sit right here? That's right. Break off a little piece of the curl and put it in your mouth and eat it. It tastes like an almond paste, and if you're awfully hungry, it's just better than nothing. Now, right nearby, we have another plant, and this one is called miner's lettuce. 
and it grows in a beautiful cluster like this. Make a circle with your hand like this and put a blossom right through the center. And then right nearby is another plant that you can eat and it's called chickweed. And it has a tiny little white blossom and usually grows in the same place. Now, if you combine your bracken and your miner's lettuce and your chickweed, you have a very good salad. Now, right over there across the fence is a plant called red top, and you can eat that too. Got a minute spending the day, who knows where? Spring outside, happy inside, something sweet in the air. I'm running, I'm hiding, I wish I had wings. Imagine all I could see. Life is full of beautiful things. I see some lupin. Who sees some lupin? I do, I do. I see a zigadini. Who sees a zigadini? I do, I do. I see a mission bell. Who sees a mission bell? I do, I do. I see a sun cup. Who sees a sun cup? I I see some poison oak. Watch out for the poison oak! I see an Indian warrior. I see some Douglas iris. I see some jelly jump ups. I see a mule's or sunflower. I see some Indian papers. I see a shooting star. Who sees a shooting star? I do, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. Poppies in checker bloom, house tongue that droops. Footsteps to spring, all in buttercup soup. by the green grassy hills and chaparral. This chaparral is made up of coyote brush and sagebrush, which grows all over California. And as the chaparral comes down in the little gullies and as the grassland comes down, the water trickles through the grass. The grass helps to hold the water so we don't have erosion. And then it trickles down, forming this beautiful pond. Our cattails are right down by the edge. And beyond that, on one side of the pond, there are tulies, which always grow where fresh water is. The mallards build their nests in the tulies. They take the dry tule twigs and make a beautiful nest. And Mrs. Mallard is brown, just like the dry tulies. In the spring, do you see this piece coming up like this? Mm -hmm. This will be a gorgeous yellow. This is the pollen, and you can shake it in your hand like this, and I think if you mixed it with water, you could even have a beautiful paint to paint with. Now peel yours, and what do you find? Seeds. This is Mother Parachute. Nature's parachutes. Everybody blow. And this is what they line their nest with. Feel how soft this is. If eggs were on this, would the eggs break? No. And Mr. Red Wing Blackbird is here, and he calls out, oh, come and you watch for his red ring. Now pick a piece of this green leaf and open it up and look at the air spaces in there, like little cells. The Indians use this to make boats out of. Okay, boys, gotta get yeah, heading back to the grill. Okay. Bye, Mr. Bye. 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 Well, I'm going, but wasn't it fun? Out with friends, learning and clowning around. Why's the day have to end? Maybe in a week or two, we'll be free. 
let's take a day for a ride beneath the beautiful sky and see what the new day brings life is full of beautiful things life is full of beautiful things For more information, visit our website, www.terwilligerfilms.org. Sights and Sounds of the Seasons is brought to you by the Terwilliger Nature Education Legacy. Well, here it is, kids, our new home in California, where the sun's supposed to shine all the time. Doesn't it ever get cold and snow? Don't you ski or throw snowballs or anything? Sorry, here on the California coast, the weather stays pretty much the same all year round. Aw, shucks. Excuse me, pardon me. Looking all around me and singing a happy tune. Looking at all my eyes can show me on a sunny afternoon. Listen to everything around me and sing in a happy tune. Listening to all my ears can tell me on a sunny afternoon. I use my eyes, my nose, my ears, my tongue, and my fingers, everyone. Cause when I look and smell and hear and taste and touch, I find learning can be fun. I'm eating everything living around me and sing in a happy tune. It's a song about the sights and the sounds of the season Written for me and for you It's a song about the sights and the sounds of the seasons Written for me and for you Your hands are for touching Your nose is for smelling Your tongue is for tasting Your ears are for hearing And eyes are for seeing Miss Twilliger, Lawrence and Lydia <laughs> Hello Lawrence, how are you? Hi Hello Lenny I'm glad you came to California I heard you talking about the seasons. In the East, you have four sharp seasons, and we do have four seasons here in California, but they don't occur all in the same place. Now look at this tree in front of us. What color do you see? Green. Green. All right, Green. then this tells us it's summertime. Now let's make some magic. Everybody go whoosh, whoosh! Oh, look what's happened. There aren't any leaves left on the tree. What time of year will that be? Winter. Winter. Everybody, let's go. Whoosh. Whoosh. Look at the flowers. Oh, and that tells us spring. it's spring. Everybody go whoosh. Whoosh. Then it's summer. One more whoosh, whoosh, whoosh! And look, the apples are all over the tree and they're ripe and ready to eat. And this is what happens to all our fruit trees and that's how we tell about the seasons. Whoosh! Spring. It's a song about the sights and the sounds of the season written for me and for you. It's a song about the sights and the sounds of the season written for me and for you. In the spring, when it's warmer, that is when the goats and the cows and the horses and the sheep have their babies. What are baby pigs called? They're called piglets. <laughs> What are baby cows called? Calves. What are baby sheep called? Lambs. What are baby goats called? Kids. Oh, look. Some bird eggs. Do you know whose eggs these are? These are Mrs. Kildare's eggs. 
She tries to protect them by pretending she is hurt, and she hopes people will follow and leave them alone. The birds have babies, too, in the early spring. It's cold sometimes, so the babies keep warm among the mother's feathers. This bird is called a coot. It's a song about the sights and the sounds of the season, written for me and for you. It's a song about the sights and the sounds of the seasons, written for me and for you. Up in the mountains, in the spring, the snow is melting and bringing water to the rest of California. Do you know what we use the water for? To drink, to grow plants. To grow plants. So in the spring, the farmers in California plant all the thousands of acres of farmland with seeds so they can grow our food. The seeds use the water from the mountains. With the help of the sun, they grow. Whoosh, summer. You don't have to have a very big yard to grow fruits and vegetables. String beans and peas, carrots, beets. August and September are the times of year when these things are ripe and you can go out and pick them. The corn starts out little and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And when then the green tassel gets all brown like this, this is when you can pick it. Help me break it up gently. Pull, that's right. Peel the top part. Now. Well, I think it's really neat because it's kind of and it's all hairy and whitish. Here. Let's break it in half and each of you take a bite. Bite where the yellow ones are, bite the white ones. They're both good. Tastes good? Moist? Yeah. Need some butter and salt on it? Yeah. <laughs> Here are some new potatoes just coming up. And look who's coming for lunch. And here's a potato plant that says, well, my leaves are all brown, and this is the time to dig me. And here is a little fork to dig the sand with, and if we push it down in the ground, maybe we'll find a potato. There's a potato right now, look. There's a potato, and you can pick it up with your hand. Brush the sand off, brush the sand off. And there's another one, and another one. Did you ever bite into a potato you just picked out of the ground? How does yeah. it taste? Um, kind of sour and watery. Tomatoes come in all different sizes. Some are vines. Look how tall this one is growing. And can you see the little yellow blossoms up there? Now see if you can find some tiny little green tomatoes. And what color is it turning? This is how the sunflower looks in spring, just after the seeds have been planted in the ground. And look how big they have grown. Every summer in June, July, and August, the fog comes in from the ocean, and it's the fog that keeps things cool. 
the summer, because there is no rain here along the coast, most grasses turn dry and become brown. But you know what you can find in the dry grass? Grasshoppers. Right, grasshoppers, thousands of grasshoppers. Whish! The farmers like a kind of dry grass, but they call it hay, and they use it to feed their animals with. It's a song about the sights and the sounds of the season Written for me and for you It's a song about the sights and the sounds of the seasons Written for me and for you Up in the mountains, called the Sierra, the trees change colors just like back east in New England. That's because it's colder up in the mountains. We have maple trees, oak trees, and beautiful dogwood trees. Now in the autumn, the leaves fall from some of the trees and dry out. Not all trees change color and have the leaves fall off. These kinds of trees are called evergreen because they are forever green. Now look at all the different kinds of bark. Some bark even looks like a jigsaw puzzle. He's trying to put the tree back together. Winter. winter is coming to California. Up in the mountains, the clouds full of water start to form. Up here where it's cold, the water becomes snow, and the weather becomes very, very cold. Lower down in the valleys, near the coast, it's warmer, so the water in the clouds doesn't become snow, and so we usually get lots of rain in the winter. Why did you move to California? Because we bought a new house. Oh, you left the four seasons back in the east. We don't have them quite that sharply here, but we do have migrations, just like you migrated from the eastern part of our country to the west. Like people move, birds and animals move too, because you know what happens in the wintertime here? The herringfish come in and lay their eggs. See all the seagulls way out there? They have come in to eat the herring eggs. Fishing boats go out and get them, get the herring. And a lot of people salt the herring down. And they love to eat salt herring after you've washed all the salt off. It's called pickled herring, and it's very delicious. And then you know who else comes in that migrates? The salmon come up from the ocean into our streams. And when they come up into our streams, they die, but Mother Nature has a plan. Nothing is wasted because as they die, along comes Mr. Raccoon and Mr. Mrs. Raccoon and Mr. Fox and Mr. Badger and Mr. Weasel, and they have some salmon for lunch. And then when the eggs hatch into little salmon, they stay here for one year and then they migrate out to the ocean. Now hold up four fingers because they're gone for four years 
and then they come back right to the place where they were born. And then the ducks come down from the north because they say it's warmer down here. Let's come down and spend the winter and that's why all the ducks are down on the, on the water.